Hi everyone, Andy Trice here, and welcome to my multi-part series on creating the back end of a mobile application using mobile services on IBM Bluemix. Now we're looking at my Bluemix dashboard. Here I can see all my apps and all my services that I'm currently using, see my quotas, I can see everything uh, you know, related to my Bluemix account. And what I want to do is create a new app. So we'll click on create an app. Um, it'll ask us what kind of app are you creating? I want to select the mobile option. And here I could choose um, a mobile app, which could be native iOS, native Android, or a hybrid application, which could be deployed to multiple platforms. Or I could do um, the new beta iOS 8 platform. And I'm going to choose iOS 8. And if we scroll down, we can see that um, this includes the SDK for Node.js, so that allows for any kind of dynamic server-side processing up in the cloud. We've got our Cloud at NoSQL database, so this gives us the ability to um, persist and retrieve information that's used by the mobile application. We've got our iOS 8 push SDK, which allows you to do push notifications and manage them from the Bluemix uh, console. And we have the advanced mobile access feature, which gives us the ability to monitor what's happening in the application. So we can um, do remote client side logging. We can see how many apps are currently connected. We can see analytics information. We can see crash reports. We can do user authentication um, and identity management, and we can use this to call into any services from the cloud environment. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. And now we need to specify an app name. We'll call this my dashboard test, and we'll hit finish. Now the Bluemix backend is going to create the Node.js instance, it's gonna create the cloud and database instance, it's going to set up everything that we need for our application. Now, it's a three-step process to configure this and tie into your mobile application. Uh, the first step is you just need to create a version of the app. So for our bundle identifier, which um, my app ID is com.tricedesigns.insurance-dashboard. And our version number is just going to be 1.0. So um, we set up a bundle ID and a version number. And next, we need to install the SDK into our client side code. Um, so this is gonna be in your local environment you know, with Xcode. Uh, there's two options to install it. You can do an automated installation using CocoaPods. If you're not familiar with CocoaPods, it's kind of like NPM for Xcode. It allows you to automate installation and manage dependencies, or you can install it, um, install the SDK manually. I'm gonna use the CocoaPods approach just because it pulls all the dependencies very easily, very quickly for us. So just by clicking on the link here on the right, that copies the, the script that we have here so I can use it to set up the CocoaPods installation. Now, let me make sure, I, okay, I don't have Xcode running right now. If you did have Xcode running, you'd have to close it. Now I'm in the directory of my current project and I'm going to initialize this project for CocoaPods. So we're just gonna run pod init. And if I run our list again, you can see that this pod file was created. If I jump back over to the finder, I'm just gonna open my pod file. And for the insurance dashboard target, which is the name of the project that I'm running, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste in the um, dependencies that we just copied out of the Bluemix console and we'll hit save. Then we will come back to our command line console and we'll run pod install. It's going to download the SDK and all the dependencies and set up your environment so that you have everything that you need to be able to tie into Bluemix services. All right, it looks like that has completed successfully. And if I run the list again, you can see that we now have, in addition to our Xcode project that we have before, we now have uh, Xcode workspace. And when we're running the app from now, we want to use the workspace instead of just the project. Now let me jump back over to my browser and we've installed the SDK and then we need to, now we need to initialize the SDK inside of our application, so inside of the native code. Um, and you can get code for this in Objective-C or for Swift. Um, I'm writing this in Objective-C right now, so I'm just going to copy this. And very important right here in the bottom right corner is the done button. Make sure you hit done when you're all ready. Uh, that'll bring you to your dashboard for the project you just created. And let me jump back over to Xcode, actually. Now let me go ahead and open up the workspace that was just created.
and I'm going to go into my insurance dashboard in our app delegate. I'm going to go ahead um, inside of uh, application did finish launching with options because this is really the first thing that your app runs. I'm going to paste in the code that we just copied from the dashboard. Uh, of course, I'm missing my import, so we'll do pound import and IMF core dot H. So we'll hit save. This is all that you need to have a connection to your app. The next thing I want to do is set this up to capture uncalled exceptions and set up my logging. So I'm gonna copy from another window, a um, couple lines of code, paste this in. Um, you can see for IMF logger, which is our um, remote logger, uh, we wanna set up to capture uncalled exceptions and we wanna set the log level at IMF log level debug. If we scroll down to here to application did enter background, I'm gonna call IMF logger and send. And this will send our logs to the Bluemix server anytime the application goes into the background. You can manually uh, send these anytime that you want, but just by adding it to application did enter background, it's gonna automatically send it when the app is no longer active. So if you are closing an app or you switch between apps, it's gonna send your logs up to the server, depending upon how you've configured it. Just to prove that uh, we have the connection, we have remote logging enabled, I wanna create a logger instance. So I'm gonna set IMF logger, we'll call it logger. We'll create a logger instance using IMF logger, logger for name, and we're gonna give this the name um, of the class that we're currently working on. So we're, we're working within app delegate. So we'll just create a logger for name app delegate, and this can be used to filter um, your logs on the server later. So if you're working different classes, you can give the them, initialize them with different names. And now let's say logger, log debug with messages. And I'll just put something in here and say, this is a log message from app launch. Now we've initialized the connection to our Bluemix server. We've configured the logger to catch uncalled exceptions, set the log level. We've created an instance of a logger. Um, we've logged a debug message. Now let me go ahead and manually send this to the server just so we can see that it is explicitly sending the logs up to the server. And I will launch my app. It's compiling the app. This will include all the libraries that we just configured through CocoaPods. So our app is now up and running. And you can see the app that I have here. Um, it's kind of a pseudo insurance dashboard that I've really just made up. I've got a list of clients over here, um, a list of claims. Um, you can see that we've got main views, we've got sub views, like basically like a master detail type situation. Um, but none of that is tied into live data yet, but I'm going to do that later in this multi-part series. If we come back and look at our console, we can see some log messages. So, um, so the first thing we have here is this is a log message from app launch. Um, that's from our app delegate. That's from the logger that we set up. We can see it, it's setting up the connection to Bluemix. Uh, there's some other log messages. Some of it's with constraints for some of my UI and my layout. Uh, but what we can see right here is client log successfully sent to server. Now let me jump back to Chrome. And we're back on the Bluemix dashboard for the app that we just created. Um, and I can go into services and go to advanced mobile access. And then I want to jump down to monitoring because under monitoring, it's going to start to give me the information about the app that's out there in the field. Um, you can see right now there's no service requests happening, so there's not a lot of data. The more you use this, the more information that's going to be available. Uh, but I, what I do want to show you is client logs because if we search here, you can see right here, this is a message from app launch. This is, if I jump back to Xcode and we hide our console, you can see this is the debug message that we wrote out um, using the logger. And we can use this to literally debug anything happening within the app. Um, we could specify your search. So if you have lots of log messages, you want to search for particular log levels, whether the debug messages, error messages, or if you um, only want to capture error messages, you can configure that. You can say, I only want to see them for simulator. Or I only want to see them for iPhone. I only want to see them for an iPad, you know, any particular um, operating system variant you can specify all this and narrow down your search so you're only really seeing what you really need to see instead of wading through tons of different information. Once you find an entry and let's say you wanna dig in, you want more detail for it, 
we can go to device logs and say, give me the, the all device logs starting from whatever time range that you want. Um, we're gonna go ahead and download that. Once we have it, we'll open that up. And really this is a JSON file that just creates all of the log messages that were captured for that device over whatever time period that you've specified. So this has been the integration of a native iOS 8 application with IBM Bluemix cloud services for mobile. I've shown you how easy it is to set up a server instance on Bluemix, uh, connect it to the native app, and write out some debug messages. Be sure to check out the next parts in this series where we show how to set up custom Node.js services and also how to set up push notifications from the Bluemix server.